You're watching the Venom vlog. Hey, when are you gonna make a Spidey vlog? Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and we are here at WonderCon 2018. I decided to come down. I, I wasn't feeling that well, and I was up late last night to upload a video, and I haven't been feeling well, but you know, I was something inside me was like, just go, even only for a couple hours, film as much as you can, and share it with, you know, you guys, all the symbiotes out there. So that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to go around and look for some Venom stuff. I'm wearing my Venom shirt, uh, which is awesome, and you can see the line forming back there to get in. I got my badge already, so I am official, Seek Donnelly, ready to go in, and uh, we're going to get started. We're going to have a lot of fun today, so thank you guys for being here. Scoot 17 chickens one day I'm the magic man, got a magic goose And chickens do stuff I can't explain to you I am already exhausted. I'm not even kidding. It's about 1 30, 1 27 right now, and I got to call it a day. I was actually noticed uh, talking to Jim Chung. My stutter started to come back a little bit. My head is starting to really kill me. Uh, so I'm going to actually go down the street, grab a quick bite, eat in my car, and I'm going to head back to Los Angeles. Uh, luckily, it's only like a 30, 40 minute drive. Uh, so I think I'll be all right. I'm going to try to talk to my mom on the way home. Uh, and then when I get there, I'll probably take a little nap. And then when I wake up, I'm going to show you guys all the cool stuff I got, including things that I'm going to use as background pieces for the show moving forward because I wanted to have a cool background again and uh, we're going to do that. We're going to decorate my new bookshelf. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to head home and I'll show you guys all the cool stuff that I got today. So I am home now and I am exhausted. I actually came home and went right to sleep as I said I would and uh, I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't get through the show man. It was really tough and uh, you know I have bad anxiety, I have a lot of health issues and just being there with the crowd. Um, I thought I was handling it okay at first. The first hour seemed to be going all right. My energy was really up. Second hour starting to drop. Third hour very, very rough. Uh, and then for, by the time the fourth hour came around, I was like, I got, I knew I had to leave. And it was a bummer because like fan base press and SBI press and uh, some other places that I wanted to go see in small press, I actually never got to make it over there. Unfortunately, I went through Artist Alley, zigzag through the whole thing and uh, then went through some of the middle stuff. And by the time I got to aisle like, I don't know, like 800 or so, I saw my friends at Golden Apple and then I managed to dip over real quickly to aisle 500 to Unknown Comics and check them out. And then I got a signature on a book I bought there on the way out and that was it. I was like, all right, it's like 115 and I can barely stand. Uh, it was tough walking on my leg all day. Uh, that added to it as well. And so I was like, yeah, it's smart if I just go home now. So I did, came home, walked my dog and passed out immediately so I want to real quick show you guys what I got and have some footage pop up on screen of what I shot earlier uh, so the first thing I did is I went and saw my friend Kate Carlton hi I'm Kate Carlton from Kate Carlton Illustration uh, you can find my work at www.katecarltonillustration.com and uh, also find me on my user tag uh, <laughs> who uh, was uh, in Artist Alley, and I bought this print from her for like $10, which just really grabbed me. She had some other cool stuff like Daredevil and Punisher side by side, and there was one with Creature of the Black Lagoon, which I'm a big fan of that character, and I was like, oh, I would love to have a Creature of the Black Lagoon like art on my wall. But then I came across this, and this is an original by Kate. This is something she designed, and it's just really cool looking. It looks like if Gwen Stacy was like a Jetsons character uh, and like mixed in with like, you know, other but pulpy sci-fi stuff from like the 50s and I really love that era of, of art in general and design and and so when I saw this I was like all right I gotta have it so and she you know Kate was nice enough to sell it to me for ten dollars I think she sells these prints normally for ten dollars uh, but I still think that's a steal uh, Kate if you're watching this you need to charge more because this thing is awesome and I can't wait to uh, to frame it and I like the card stock like what it's printed on it's really thick and it's gonna look nice in a frame so I'm definitely gonna do that and frame that up um, I might go out of order, but I did get some footage. You might see some footage pop up on screen here of people that I didn't get signatures from or couldn't get drawings from. I tried, uh, but I just had very little money, and uh, obviously I want to pay these artists like what they deserve, you know, for for their art. And I still even got some of them still gave me like cool deals. But, uh, but you know, I ran into like Todd Knock and talked to him for a minute. He was doing a sketch for another guy. And I was like, hey, is it cool if I film this? And they were like, yeah, totally cool, man. Um, and then I just went down Artist Alley, just kept meeting people. I met Cat Staggs, 
which was really cool. Uh, she drew a book that I really loved, which was uh, uh, Smallville, and she'd done a lot of covers too. And she, um, in Smallville, uh, they did like a season 11 and then other seasons that picked up after where the show ended. And she did some artwork for it, and I really liked her style, and I really liked her, and I've seen her in a couple interviews, uh, or read a couple interviews of her, and she always seemed like a really nice person. And I was like, you know, I, I want to meet her in person. I never got the chance to meet her. And so I went by her booth or her artist alley table, and she was selling pages from Smallville for $25. And the only original artwork that I own is stuff that was sent to me from my book, Soul Star, and then also um, like a, a Monomyth, like the original cover for that by Eric Nanatowski. I have that. And then uh, my friend Omar, he bought me like an original sketch of Aqualad once. And that's pretty much all the like original art I have outside of like, you know, stuff that was sent to me on a project I work on. And so when I was like, I really want to own original page of Superman artwork. So I know this is the Venom vlog, but there's got to be a lot of things here that aren't Venom related. But I did pick up this page of Superman fighting, and there was a great shot of him flying there. And I was like, that's only 25 bucks, And this is her original art. And she was like, yeah, just 25 bucks." So I was like, okay, I'll buy it. Uh, and as you can see, she prints a little bit larger than uh, 11 by 17. She says she has trouble seeing sometimes, so uh, so she pr you know draws bigger. And uh, so I have to find a special frame for this. I think 13 by 19 or something like that, if I can find one. Uh, but yeah, original page of artwork. I'm so excited for that. That's really cool. And for $25, that was just a steal. I would have bought more if I had more money. I would have bought probably the whole stack and just lined my whole wall with uh, Superman Smallville pages. Um, but then, like I said, I kept going around. I went down to um, uh, Rampage, the movie Rampage that's coming out with The Rock, and they were giving out these cool free posters. So I got this one here, and I got this one here. And they also gave uh, a Dave, gave me a Dave & Buster's like uh, gift card for $20. Like if you spend $20 on games, you get an additional $20. So I might have to go check it out because I guess they... They had them on display there. They had the original Rampage games like modded up and like, you know, souped up in big, you know, versions. And they made big arcade machines out of them. And I guess they are putting those in David and Buster's all around the country to promote the movie, which I think is a genius idea. Uh, so I have to go and play this because the line there was pretty long. I couldn't get into it. Uh, but I have to go to David and Buster's now and play that game. So you'll see footage there from the booth. Um, and it just looked like a ton of fun. Um, and then, like I said, I went and saw my friend Eric Minatowski. Uh, he was nice enough to actually gift me something. I told him, you know, I might be doing something with Fantastic Four uh, for Twitch only because I, I know a lot of people miss me on Twitch and I haven't had time to game. So I thought about making a show just for Twitch. And I think it's going to be about the Fantastic Four. Uh, a lot of people don't know and are surprised when I tell them I'm a huge fan of this book and these characters. And I actually have all 102 uh, plus the Lost issue uh, that was reprinted and the Last Adventure that Stan Lee uh, and Jack Kirby did. Last Adventure, I think John Romita Jr. did. But the other ones were by... Uh, by uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, the king, Jack Kirby. And I think I might do a show uh, rereading all, all, all of their issues and uh, talking about them. And you got the first appearance of Galactus, Silver Surfer, Inhumans, Black Panther. There's so many characters that pop up for the first time in that run, which is why it's so iconic to me. So I think we're going to talk about it, and I'm going to see if uh, I'm just going to have this in the background in every episode because I think Eric drew the living crap out of it. And he was inspired by Heroes Reborn, which might even be a story we talk about past the uh, Stan Lee stuff. Uh, so yeah, that was really cool. And then he, I guess, represents an artist that lives out of the country, and uh, I bought a Venom print that that artist drew, and I just thought this looked so cool. I thought it was Eric's. I was like, that doesn't look like your style, but maybe someone digitally, you know, digitally painted over it. He's like, no, it's not mine. It's a friend of mine. So I wanted to give that guy a shout out too. Uh, his name's up on screen here and his website as well. And I'll put links to all the stuff. If you see any uh, links or, or you know websites or anything pop up on screen, I'll have links to them down below if you want to go check out these people's artwork. So yeah, that was really cool. Pick that up, um, which I just can't wait to have more Venom art on my wall. And then I love that there was a bunch of artists in Artist Alley that do these little metal things like they print on metal which is really cool the first person i saw do that was livio ramondelli i tried to stop by and see him but he was like you know selling stuff so i didn't want to bother him so i was like i'll come back later and of course i wasn't feeling well later so i never got to go back and see him so i'll have to catch him at the next show but i first saw him printing i'm not saying he was the first he was the first person i saw a couple years ago print on metal because he draws transformer comics and uh, i always thought transformers on metal prints looked really cool and i have one i have a, a optimus prime one which is really neat and so now they're doing like art 
artists are doing metal cards, like these little metal cards uh, for $5. So I ran into Marat Michaels, who we've mentioned on the show a few times, and checked out some of his artwork. And he sold this to me for 5 bucks. I mean, I guess all these cost $5, which is really awesome. So uh, I got a Venom one that he did. He had a, a metal print of it, or a regular print of it, for 20 but I was just, you know, on a budget. So I was like, all right, I want to support as many people as I can. So I spent five bucks and got this from him. And uh, he was nice enough to do a little intro for us. So you might see that from time to time uh, in a couple of our episodes. So thank you, Marat, very much for talking to me. And he's like, hey, I know who you are. You, yeah, because I was like, hey, I do this show about Venom. He's like, yeah, you talked about me on your show. He's like, thank you so much. And then he was like, what do you think of the trailer? And we started talking about Venom for like 10 minutes. And it was really nice. So a uh, big shout out to that guy. Super awesome. So I'll have a link to his art down below. And then I ran into this guy who I'd, I'd never heard of before for um, but his name is uh, Jason Metcalf and I'll have his information on screen and down below but I had to get a Ghost Rider from him he had another s card that I wanted that had all the Spider-Man in it like all the Spider-Man clones and I wanted to get that but I, when I saw this I was like no I gotta get Ghost Rider because I'm gonna need some artwork for that show too when we do the Ghost Rider show later this year so I picked that up five bucks and then the last one I got was my friend Chris Thorne, uh, who I ran into, and I'll have probably something pop up on screen here in a second, uh, but this is uh, Chris's uh, artwork, and he draws zombie stuff, and I'll actually let him explain to you what he does really well, and you can check out his stuff. I'll have everything on screen, but I'll cut to Chris, and he'll tell you all about it. All right, this is Chris Thorne from Chris Thorne Art. I have launched a new website called YourZombieFuture.com. Uh, what I'll do is take the picture that you upload to my website, I will zombify it and ship it to you. Here at the show, I'm uh, doing uh, custom ones here at the show. I'll take your picture, I'll go ahead and zombify you, and you can shop around until it's done and come back to the website and pick it up. These are some of the examples of some of the zombies. Yourzombiefeature.com. Awesome. And then you can also find more at christhornart.info. That's it. Next up, I actually ran into John Boy Myers, who is a phenomenal artist, did Spawn, has done a bunch of things, doing Super Sons, I think, uh, for DC, and did, did a bunch of covers as well, and he's just a really awesome dude, and I've I've been wanting to meet him for, for a while now, uh, ever since I've read Spawn Resurrection. And I brought a copy with me, and he signed it. And I mean, this thing's 10 bucks. It's the return of Al Simmons, because if you don't know in Spawn, Al Simmons, the original Spawn, he disappeared for a while, for like 100 issues almost. And then they brought him back, and it was really cool. Uh, this story is awesome. And I've probably read this graphic novel like three or four times uh, since I bought it. And it was it's only $9.99. And uh, it's, it's just so good. If you've been wanting to jump back into Spawn, I would recommend jumping in here. The first issue is just Spawn talking to God the entire time. And it's interesting. It's like really interesting. And the art is phenomenal. And John Boy just killed it on this book. Paul Jenkins co-wrote it with Todd McFarlane. So when uh, when jo uh, you know John Boy, he was like, hey, I'll, I'll sign that for you. And then he was like, hey, if you come back around 3 o'clock, maybe I'll do a Venom sketch for you. And I was like, oh, that'd be awesome. So that shows you just how well I did not feel because I couldn't even go back to get a sketch that m possibly would have been free. I don't know. He said, he's like, yeah, I did a couple of free Venom sketches earlier. Come back around three, maybe I'll sketch something up for you. So I don't know if he meant that was going to be for free. I would have happily paid if it wasn't free, uh, but that just shows you I was not feeling good. I was like, ah, I got to leave. Uh, so that, that bummed me out that I missed an opportunity to get another Venom sketch. Uh, but I did get a bunch of other Venom stuff that we'll show here in a second. So, you know, I'm not, I didn't leave empty handed. Uh, then I ran across an Image Comics booth and uh, a friend of mine uh, that works there. Uh, Daniel was really awesome and he was telling me about this new book Oblivion Song. So I got this and it's awesome. It's so awesome. Uh, this is Robert Kirkman, the creator of The Walking Dead. This is his new book and the artist is Lorenzo de Fel Felici and uh, his art is it's great. It's, it's really cool. It's, uh, I might have to do a video on this, and I probably will. I'll do a separate video. I'll wait till like two or three issues come out, and we'll talk about this. We'll do a review of like the first two or three issues. But it's like, like teleportation stuff. It's alternate world stuff, I think. I think hell like is real, and it came to Earth, but it's like a quarantine zone, and this guy teleports in there to try to rescue people. I don't know if it's another dimension or if it's like on Earth itself. It's still kind of loose. It's the first issue, so it doesn't explain everything, uh, but it has a great twist and a great setup, and I think I'm going to make its own video series, and I'm definitely going to add this to my pull box. So, Daniel and, uh, and everyone at Image, thanks for telling me about this. I loved it. I read it cover to cover before we started, uh, you know, uh, recording this episode, and it's it's great if you're out there and you want something new that's you know not mainstream comics not marvel and dc pick that up from image comics really really good stuff 
All right, so let's see, what else do I got? Uh, I ran into Golden Apple Comics, and they are promoting their new book, which will be in Diamond, which I would put the Diamond code up here, but I can't because it's not in Diamond. I went and looked at it online before we started recording, so I was going to say, go tell your comic stores to order this through this code, but still you can tell them by the name, Blastosaurus. So you can still go to your local comic shop and tell them about this. And they're also doing a book called Adventure Van, and this is Golden Apple Comics, the comic book store that I used to work at, and they're starting to publish their own stuff and get in the Diamond uh, distribution, and they're going to be available at all comic stores. So you can go in. Adventure Van is really cool. It's about a guy who's like basically has a van uh, and he goes adventures on, uh, in him. Uh, but it's like gets really, really crazy and really over the top. Uh, so they handed out free previews there. And you can check out goldenapplecomics.com to check it, find out more. But for Blastosaurus, I'm actually going to cut to the uh, the writer and creator of this, uh, uh, Richard Fairgray, who actually knew who I was. I went up and I was like, yeah. He's like, who do I make it out to? And I was like, my name is Seek. And he was like, Seek? And he goes, I go, yeah. And I go, he's like, which your last name I go Donnelly and then he just dropped his pen and looked at me and goes dude I'm a huge fan of yours and I'm like what <laughs> like I'm like you're the comic book guy here like you're signing my book what do you mean you're a fan of mine he goes oh I listen to Harmontown religiously back when it first started and I heard your story on there and he had a similar story about with like his, his eye and he was telling me about how he's going through medical stuff with you know with internally and uh, and it just how he resonated with my story when I shared it on uh, Harmontown and it it made me it made me really emotional and it, this guy was really awesome so I really want you to go support his book go tell people about Blastosaurus uh, and if you want to know what it's about, I'm actually going to cut to Richard right now and he's going to tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Richard Fairgray and this is my new book, Blastosaurus. It's about a six foot tall mutant time fighting triceratops. It's big, stupid fun with octopuses, robots, monsters, aliens, a ghost with unfinished pleasure because he died halfway through watching a movie. And it's got like real human heart, great characters. It's an all ages book and it'll be in stores everywhere uh, from July. Order it through uh, previews. It'll be in previews in May and just go out there and get it. It's the first time it's available in the US and I'm super excited. But I did go to a couple other booths and I found some Venom comics that I was looking for. One of them was this one, the flashback Venom issue called Seed of Darkness. Uh, in this, I think it was like 97 or 98, Marvel did this thing where they flashed back for one issue and they did a, a, a issue minus one. So it took place before issue one or before issue zero. And it tells you a story of characters before they became the characters. So like there was, you know, the Spider-Man books told you stories about Peter Parker as a teenager uh, before he got bit by the spider, you know, hanging out with Uncle Ben. I think one version, like one issue, they were going fishing together or something. And it was just like really fun stuff like that. And this one is Eddie Brock. And a lot of you guys have asked me about pre-Venom Eddie Brock stories, and there aren't that many. Uh, pretty much uh, Dark Origin has a little bit of Eddie Brock before you got the suit in it, and then an occasional flashback here and there in the main comics. But other than that, pretty much this. So I figured even though it's not in print, although I think they're going to put it in one of the Ven Omnibuses or something that's coming out this year, uh, so it might end up in print anyway, but we're still going to review it and talk about it uh, for sure. And for only five bucks, that was a good deal uh, to get it at. And then I also got the Venom Agenda, which is something that is also not in print, uh, and probably something I can't really, you know, like uh, recommend, you know, a printed version you can go buy right now. It's not available digitally, I don't think either. Uh, so it'll be a kind of a special one-off episode that we're going to do. But it was written by Larry Hama and it was drawn by Tom Lyle, who you know I'm a huge fan of. And I couldn't find this in my collection the other day and I got really bummed. So I added it to my list to look for when I went to WonderCon and luckily found it for $3. Uh, they only charged 3 bucks for it, which is the cover price of when it came out in the 90s. I think it was the 90s. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is cool. We're going to talk about this. It's like a, a one-off Spider-Man Venom story to kind of wrap up a lot of the Venom miniseries that were happening in the 90s. Uh, and Larry Hama wrote a couple of those, so this is kind of like his like almost end chapter right around the time the Venom finale miniseries came out. And then last, I got this, which is, I guess, Spider-Man number one. I have no idea what this book is. It says 100th anniversary, number one variant cover, $4. But I just thought that was such a sick drawing of Venom. I've never seen anything like that, and it just looked really cool. I've never seen this cover before. I don't know who the artist is right now. I haven't opened this up or checked it out, but man, does that look cool. That is such a twisted looking Venom. And I just thought, wow, maybe movie version uh, could look something like this. I don't know, but you guys let me know what you think of that. I just, it's just, it jumped out at me. I was like, you know what? I wasn't gonna spend any more money at this booth, but when I saw this cover, I'm like, I don't even know what it is, but I gotta have it. I gotta have it and frame it on the wall or something. So yeah, that's that was pretty awesome. Uh, and then the last couple things that I ran into uh, a couple years ago, again at MegaCon 2013, 
I ran into Mark Bagley, and he was nice enough to draw a, uh, a Spider-Man sketch on my Age of Ultron sketch cover. It was the only sketch cover I had uh, that had Spider-Man in the book, because I think Spider-Man shows up for like a panel or two in this book. And I was like, hey, would you draw him? I just was like, this is all I have. Will you draw Spider-Man for me? So he did that, uh, which is awesome. And now I have something to put across from it, maybe in the same frame, which is I got a drawing on Venomverse. And this is by Eric Nintowski. He's the artist that worked with me on Monomyth, my comic book. He drew all three issues of the book, and I wanted to support him, and I, I've been keeping in touch with him for the past couple months. Want to work on a comic book with him. I pitched some comic books recently to work on after my Neverland books are done and, and start shipping out, and I, you know just to keep myself busy and working and writing. Um, and so I asked Eric if he was available, and he said he might be later this summer, so keep in touch with him. And he did this for me, uh, which was really awesome. Uh, it was so cool of him to do that. And then on top of that, give me that Fantastic Four print. And that's why I spent the other $20 to buy the other print from his friend, because I was like, hey, I, I appreciate it. But yeah, this is he did this, and I'm going to frame this next to the Spider-Man. And the fact that he drew in Eddie was awesome. And he actually flipped through this. He hadn't read this book. And he flipped through this and saw Ebon Coelho's artwork. And he was like, hey, that artwork in here is pretty cool. And I'm like, I know, right? Like, this, the, Ebon's awesome. So uh, I'm going to actually have something pop up on screen here with Eric, and he's going to tell you where you can find more of his artwork. So definitely go support him. He does commissions, drawings, anything you want. Go check him out. Eric, take it away. Uh, you can find me online at ericmanotowskiart.com and also divinefirestudios.com. Uh, and then I'm actually going to show some stuff here. I, I actually walked around and saw some people uh, that I knew or people just dressed up. I, not a lot, but um, I want to show a couple images here of them. And uh, and if they have anything to plug, like I ran to my friend Joe, and I'll put a link to his you know uh, podcast, Joe and Joe Podcast. He does a great podcast about G.I. Joe, so check him out. I ran into a guy who was dressed as Moss, which was pretty cool. I took pictures with uh, Richard Fairgrave, uh, who, you know, who did the uh, Blastosaurus comic book, um, which is cool. And then uh, I ran into this guy named uh, Pepe Milan, I believe is his name, and I'll put his information up on screen there. And he actually, I just saw this sketch cover he did, and it was so beautiful. It was awesome, a Venom, and I thought it was so cool. So I was like, hey, I can't afford it, but can I take a picture of you and maybe like give you a plug on the show? And he was like, absolutely. So there's that, and there's you know, I'll throw a couple other things up there if there's anything else to throw up, um, you know, to you know to have on screen that I forgot about because obviously I can't remember every little thing I did today, but I think I got a pretty good amount of them. Uh, so yeah, there are those. Enjoy that. And uh, and then last but not least, I want to talk about uh, what I did right before I left because like I said, I ran into Jim Chung, and uh, and that was I was starting to you know fall apart at that point so I decided to leave uh, the show for a few minutes get some water kind of take my you know take my take a few breaths uh, relax and then I was really adamant to see my friends in small press and I was like let's head over to small press and see if we can run into my friends over there at fan base and SBI and stuff like that and of course about halfway there I started to run out of steam but then I was like you know what I'm in aisle 500 there's Unknown Comics is here, and they're the people who I ordered those variant covers from uh, for Venom. That'll be coming up. Venomized, one through five. I got the Mark Bagley variants, and then a couple of the 30th anniversaries. I hung out, talked with them for a few minutes, and uh, was like, all right, let's 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 buy some stuff from them. And one of the things I bought was this. Uh, it's a, a exclusive cover they did at some point, I think, for their store. Uh, but it's uh, Amazing Spider-Man, or Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, issue 300. And it's a Tyler Kirkham cover. And I was like, you know, I, I wanted to support these guys. I wanted to buy something from their booth here at the show. So for 15 bucks, I think this was, it was it was awesome. And I like I said, I normally don't click variants, but this one has Mary Jane on it, Spider-Man and Black Cat, uh, and Venom and Carnage. I mean, that's the whole package right there for you know for me. I was like, that's awesome. You know, the two women that Spider-Man was fighting over in the in the 80s and stuff, and leading up to you know the marriage of Mary Jane. Uh, but then, uh, but the, you know, also the they tie into these characters, especially Venom. He's unfortunately tormented both of these uh, women and Spider-Man uh, numerous times. And so seeing this all together with Tyler Kirkham's artwork was awesome. And then they told me he was there. So on my way out, he was literally on the way out. Uh, you know, he signed it for me, which was really cool. And then after he signed it, he was a really nice guy. I have some footage up here of him signing it and signing other stuff for other people. But after he signed it, I was like, you know what, I, I want to spend some kind of money on, on this guy and maybe there's something else at his table that I can get real quick before I leave and maybe something I can have for my show. And I went back to the table and just as I was like, what am I going to get? I don't see anything Venom related here. Should I buy another comic with a different cover or something of his? I actually saw something really cool. He had a pop-up standee that you could buy for 20 bucks, And so I bought it. How cool is that? Uh, this thing just you know stands up. I'm going to put it in my background when we do the show. 
I'm currently recreating my background with some of the stuff. I'm going to add it to the shelf. And so you're going to see different backgrounds for me when I start recording from now on. I'm going to go sit in front of my bookshelf and I'm going to have all my Venom stuff on the bookshelf. And this thing's going to be right behind me. And I thought this would work for silver and black too in case we ever like cover any silver and black stuff. Uh, but yeah, look at this. This art's amazing. And he signed it for me, which was really nice of him. He signed it right there. And, uh, and I was telling him what I'm going to use it for. I'm like, hey, it's going to go in the background of my Venom show on YouTube. Is that cool? And he goes, dude, that would mean a lot to me. That would be awesome. So uh, that's really cool I'd to get his approval on that too. So yeah, this thing for 20 bucks is the last 20 bucks I spent at the show. I think my budget, I think I spent about $145, like roughly. I mean, not even roughly. I think that's exact uh, because everything was like 5 10 or 15 bucks. So I think I ended up spending $145. I went with 100 uh, but because I wanted, uh, you know, the sketch cover on my Venomverse from Eric and a couple other things, I went a little over budget, uh, which is probably going to hurt a little bit coming up for rent. But you know what? Worth it, in my opinion. I mean, I'll still have rent money, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but yeah, so what do you guys think of that? Uh, I can't wait to have that in the background. That's going to look really cool. Uh, and that in the background back here, obviously, I'm going to have the bookshelf behind me, so it'll be nice. So yeah, that was my WonderCon experience. I had a great time. I ran into a couple friends, uh, Philip Kelly, a couple other people that I ran into. Uh, Jomily, if you guys watch my Twitch channel, and Jomily, who comes in and chats with us sometimes, and she also is a gamer and Twitch streamer as well, ran into her and her husband. So it was nice to see friends and, uh, and and for a lot of them to be encouraging and say, hey, welcome back to the world of comics, because I stepped away for a while with writing and everything like that and just kind of got lost in working at Lego and working with toys. And they were like, you know, are you coming back? And I'm like, yeah, I, you know, this is hard to get through, but it's baby steps. I got to get through the crowds. I got to, you know, you know, handle myself better. Uh, and then I got to get more books out there, including Neverland, which I'm going to go work on right now before I go to bed because I have to work early tomorrow morning. So uh, yes, thank you guys so much for watching this. As always, let me know what you think of all this down below and i'll have more venom vlog stuff for you very soon this week we're going to be looking at venom edge of venomverse venomverse and poison x the three uh, stories that lead up to venomized which starts i think in a week or two uh, and it'll be coming out every week a new issue and every week a new issue comes out i'm going to give you the digital code and review that specific issue every single week every wednesday so be on the lookout for those thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace